What is good, everyone? I hope you all had an amazing weekend. I've actually been battling a head cold for the past few days, so I'm still not really top-notch at this point, but this video could not wait as we got the first performance numbers right now for the Intel i7 8700K up against the 7700K in gaming and synthetic benchmarks so we can see if this processor is going to be worth it and how it stacks up to the quad-core variant from Intel because this is their first time really putting a six core 12 threaded part out into the mainstream and not into the high end desktop space, which it has previously always been reserved for. And the CPUs, they have mentioned in this article that they're expecting to have NDAs kind of lifting on benchmarks and everything around October 5th. So you may have to wait like another 10 days before you can actually see some reviews on this thing. But thankfully X preview have already posted up their review online. So we are going to be taking a look at all of those numbers and analyzing them. But first off, I just wanted to show you guys the sort of pin layout on the back of the CPU, which they mentioned in this article as well, is that it is exactly the same to the 8700K. If you look at the pin position, it is identical. And it really just kind of begs the question as to why they would actually need to require you to get a 300 series motherboard when it looks like it should be able to work in the 200 and the 100 series motherboard. They went up further in the article to mention that Intel is saying that it is because they need to redesign the power supply portion of the motherboards for the 8700K because it's a six core 12 threaded, but it's a little bit fishy and you know, who knows if it's actually true or if they just wanna sell you guys new motherboards, which kind of sounds a bit more likely, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, first up, they did some game benchmarks with both of these CPUs running at their stock settings where they saw the 8700K boosting up to around 4.3 to 4.7 gigahertz. And they said that it could overclock as well to 4.7 gigahertz, which is going to be amazing for a six core 12 threaded CPU. The 7700K stock settings, of course, was going between 4.2 and 4.5 gigahertz. And they ran all of their benchmarks on the 1080 Ti along with eight gigabytes of DDR4 memory. So we got the graph here with all of the benchmarks from X Preview, and like you know, the link to this will all be down in the description below if you want to go check it out for yourself and all of the data. Uh, but you can see it is getting a slight edge here, running at stock settings. Uh, in answer to the singularity, it got 48 FPS versus 42.1. Witcher 3 got a pretty big bump up with 130 to 118. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider actually performed just a little bit worse, getting 169 to 177. The Division also performed better on the 7700K. And lastly, Hitman ran better on the 8700K. Now, that is at the stock clock speed, which actually has the 8700K running higher. And the total result of that is about a 1.43% improvement over the 7700K running at stock clock speeds. And that's, you know, with the extra cores and all of that. So let's go ahead and pan down now to the test done at the same exact clock speed, which will give us a really good picture of the IPC gain that we could expect in this. First, looking at the synthetics here, um, I'll look like this is all gonna be on your screen here. I'm not gonna go through all the numbers, but the end result here shows that the single threaded is just slightly behind. It's kind of within the margin of error, like on Cinebench single threaded, the 7700K got 195, while the 8700K got 194. So that's sort of within the margin of error. And that's both CPUs running at 4.5 gigahertz. But the end result here was that on single threaded, it was about a little more than half a percent behind the 7700K, while on multi-threaded, it's about 46% faster, which you should expect because it has 50% more threads than what the 7700K has. So that is going to be great for anyone that doesn't want to take advantage of multi-threaded workloads or games that actually scale well enough for 12 threads and six cores. As far as the game benchmarks are concerned, running at the same exact clock speed, it saw an improvement of 7%, which is not bad at all compared to the 7700K. We could see Ash of the Singularity, 1 by 7 FPS, Witcher 3 up by 21 FPS, so nice gain there. Rise of the Tomb Raider, now they actually edge them out, running at the same clock speed, getting 178 FPS versus 176. Very close, but still edging it out just there. And that is the case in all of the benchmarks there when running at the same exact clock speeds. Now we'll have to wait and see more samples out in the wild to see how far the 8700K can go. They've said 4.7 gigahertz is what they were able to hit. 
So if everyone out there is, is hitting 4.7 or maybe in some cases 4.8 or 4.9, that is going to be a monster CPU for multitasking as well as gaming when you consider how many threads it's going to have at that speed, which Ryzen just can't really touch right now. I mean, on a good day, you're going to get maybe 4, 4.1 gigahertz, like on a really good day with a very high voltage typically. More realistically, on a Ryzen CPU, you're likely to see somewhere around 3.8 to 4 gigahertz. That's probably going to be um, a more consistent area where you could expect to hit with overclocking before getting into some crazy voltages. So this is very exciting, and I'm looking forward to seeing these CPUs out there and you know doing some more benchmarks in the future with them. But this is uh, a good start, I think, at least for these uh, CPUs. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on this, and the, uh, the story and everything will be linked down in the description. Next, I just wanted to follow up a story which I covered last week on the 1070 Ti rumor. There was a rumor floating around that we were going to be seeing a 1070 Ti at some point, and now Gigabyte recently hinted over on their Facebook page that there was going to be a T new Ti graphics card, which they put this image that kind of looks, it's a clown, basically it looks like it. They have the same font as it, and it's got the red balloon, it even says you'll float too, and it just, instead of saying it, it says TI, basically pointing out that there would be a new TI graphics card coming soon, and with the, you know, the theme of it being that it's a scary clown and all of that, kind of Halloween right around the corner, I think it would not be too far-fetched to expect maybe to see these cards out before the end of October, before Halloween hits. So maybe we will actually see these very soon. I just wanted to bring that to you guys as a follow-up to that story from last week, as I mentioned. If you go over onto the Gigabyte Facebook page now, unfortunately, the post has already been removed, so you can't go over there and look at it for yourself. So not sure if they kind of jumped the gun a little too early here and NVIDIA made them pull it down, but it looks like we may actually see the 1070 Ti soon, if that is in fact what they were talking about. I don't know, could it be a 1060 Ti? I doubt it. Ten, but 1070 Ti, we saw that in the rumors, and... So this is looking like it is actually heading towards that direction, which is pretty exciting. So I'll pose that question to you once again, like I did last week. If the 1070 Ti comes out, are you going to pick one of these up? Being that it'll be somewhere between 1070 and 1080 performance, probably around 450 bucks. Maybe we'll even see a price drop on the GTX 1070. That would certainly be very exciting to see something along those lines. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys. If you enjoyed this tech news video and the leaked performance benchmarks, on the i7-8700K, then you know what to do. Leave a like on the video down below. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you have been here for a while, you can always hit the notification bell so you find out whenever I'm uploading tech news videos like this one right here. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Ta-ra.